All right, in this video, we're going to be working the new BC homework 2.1, which is, I guess, about elementary derivative rules in general, but there's going to be a lot of derivative power rule, right? starting with this one, find dy dx. That just means take the derivative. So we've got y here, dy dx is going to be the derivative. We're going to apply derivative power rule. We swing the power around the front, and then we subtract 1 from the power. Okay, plus 3x to the 2 plus 4 four in the front, subtract one from the power. Uh, you could call that 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed if you wanted to, but I don't think that's all that much more simple, so I'm not going to do anything with it. Okay, remember 2x is 2x to the first power, um, and 3 is 3 times x to the 0. Okay, If you just remember that the derivative of, you know, 2x is going to be 2 because it's a line with slope 2, well, that's, that's probably better, um, but it also fits with power. Uh, same with 3x to the 0, right? You could use the power rule, um, but I think best is to be like, oh, y equals 2x minus 3. That's a line with slope 2, so dy dx should equal 2 everywhere. Okay, y equals cube root x plus 1 over cube root x. So I'm going to call that x to the 1 third plus x to the negative 1 third. And, and then I'm going to apply derivative power rule. I'm going to around the front, subtract 1 from the power, so 1 third minus 3 thirds is negative 2 thirds, and then plus negative 1 third x to the negative 1 third, subtract 1, negative 1 third minus 3 thirds is going to be negative 4 thirds, and I'm feeling like that's perfectly simplified enough for our purposes here. All right, dy dx, I'm going to multiply the 2 by the 3, 6, and then subtract 1 from the then, okay, you need to remember the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. But, you know, since you just learned that fact, I think it would be, like, totally understandable if you had you know, your reference sheet nearby. Ideally, maybe you would write down a hypothesis and then go check against it because you're coming up against a time where you're not going to be able to have a reference sheet, like, you know, the quiz coming up. Okay, um, this one, the square root of x to the 5, I'm just going to go off to the side and call that x to the 5 halves, okay? I think I had, had room to rewrite that over here. Okay, plus 2 sine x. Okay, well, x to the 5 halves, I can take the derivative of that. 5 halves x to the 5 halves subtract 1. Well, 5 halves is like 2.5, so if I subtracted 1, I'd have 1.5, and that's 3 halves. And then the derivative of 2 sine x is going to be 2 cosine Right. We recently learned that e to the x is its own derivative, so if y equals e to the x plus something, dy dx is going to at least start off with e to the x plus one of the derivative of that thing. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so plus negative sine or minus sine of x. Right. I think maybe this one, uh, okay, well, oh, this is kind of the opposite. So this is going to be 3x to the... 2 over 5. Remember, it's the fifth root. It'll be the one-fifth power. Okay, minus 4 cosine x, but I, again, I don't know if it's too crowded. Um, I'm going to multiply the two-fifths by the 3, and I'll get 3 over 1 times 2 over 5 is going to be 6 over 5. And then we're going to subtract 1 from the power. So if I've got two-fifths minus 1 is like two-fifths minus five-fifths is going to be negative. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I'd have negative 4 times negative sine x is going to be positive 4 sine x. Okay, now we've got a natural log. It's kind of an ingredient we haven't seen yet. Okay, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So I have 1 over x here, but 2 over x, we're going to want to call that 2x to the negative. Okay, and then when I take the derivative of 2x to the negative 1, I'm going to multiply the negative 1 over here by the 2, and I'm going to subtract 1 from the power. Okay, now if you wanted to call this x to the negative 1 minus 2x to the negative 2, or 1 over x minus 2 over x squared, that's fine, but I really don't think in the amount of space you were given, you should try to combine these with a common denominator. That would be crazy. Um, and just not necessary. You'd be no more right than you were, you know, at this step. All right, back to the derivative power rule. This is a nice looking polynomial. 4 times 5 is 20x to the 3 minus 3 times 4 is 12x to the 2. Right. 
Now, okay, here's multiplication and division. We are going to need to simplify first before taking the derivative, because you can't just take the derivative of the top and the bottom of a fraction or of two factors that are getting multiplied together. It does not work. Okay, so what we're going to do is say, all right, x square root of x in the denominator is dividing by x to the 1 half, which is like multiplying by x to the And then, then we've got that 5x to the 4 plus 8, getting an x to the negative half distributed over it. And so maybe I'll call that uh, 5x to the, you could call that 3.5, I would not mind. Um, but if I take 4 and I subtract a half, I'm going to have 7 halves left, because 4 is 8 halves. Okay. And then plus 8x to the negative 1 half, distributing that 1 over x squared to both of those terms. And then I'm going to... Okay, I did, wait, have I taken the, oh, no, I did not actually take the derivative. Yeah. I'm dangerous. thought I was done. dy dx, I'm going to use derivative power rule, multiply there, 7 halves times 5 is going to be 35 halves. x to the, subtract 1 from the power, so 7 halves minus 2 halves would be 5 halves. And then if I multiply the negative 1 half by 8, I'm going to have negative 4 x to the subtract 1 from the power, there we go. This one, I'll try not to make the same error, I'll distribute the x squared over the 1, and the cube root x. Well, the cube root is x to the 1 third power, so I'll have 2 plus a third, 2 is 6 over 3, plus an extra 1 would be 7 over 3. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so x to the 7 thirds, and then it'll be minus because there. Okay. Now if we go to take the derivative using the power rule, we're going to say 2x to the first minus 7 thirds x to the 7 thirds minus 3 thirds is going to be 4 thirds. Now, uh, this one I did kind of just wanted to squeeze something else in, but this one's, this is a little beyond now, if I'm being honest, but I just wanted to show you this so that in a, you know, a week or so when we talk about, start talking about chain rule, that I'll be like, oh yeah, we did do this one once. Um, okay, I'm going to use a log property first, and I'm going to rewrite y. So, oh, y is going to equal natural log of 3 plus natural log of x. And I, again, I don't want to like be emphasizing the wrong thing here. Um, I don't want you to think that you're going to need to like be using log properties all the time in this calculus class. That's not really the reality. Um, I just sometimes I might throw it on homework, show you what, what we might could do if we did use those log properties. So, okay, I'm going to have this natural log of three is just a number. Remember, a log is an exponent. So it's the exponent I put on e to get three. Well, I, I don't know what that is, but it's probably just some bad decimal number. So the derivative of some bad decimal number is going to be zero any number is zero because it's unchanging and at its core the derivative is a rate of change. And then we're going to say the derivative of natural log x is 1 over x. So that'll be a perfectly fine expression. All right, now find the value of the derivative at the indicated point. Okay, that's something we're going to need to do a lot in this unit. It's like give have a function given to you and ask, you know, what's f prime of negative 3? Okay, what we'll want to do first is take the derivative f prime of x and then we're going to plug in negative three um for a couple of reasons first because it's like you don't want to put the cart before the horse but also because the way that this stuff is scored you know in free response situations like say the free response section of the ap exam or the quiz in my class um the first point is going to be for like taking the derivative correctly so at this point f prime of x is going to be 2x plus zero and then I'm going to plug in f prime of negative 3, and I'm going to get 2 times negative 3 plus 0, and that's going to equal negative 6. All right, now I'm going to, I see a fraction. I need to rewrite that first, either by writing this power of x or maybe doing some algebra like I've done yeah, up here. Um, plus 2g prime of x, which I'm going to need first. I'm going to apply the power rule negative 6, x to the negative 2, and then the derivative of 2 is 0. So, okay, there we go. Then, 
g prime of negative 1. Well, I know that's going to be negative 6. Um, oh, well, I, pardon me, I already thought it was negative 1. So, okay. Now, it is going to be negative 6, but um, this was not that situation I thought it was. Okay, so this is negative 6 divided by negative 1 to the 2 power. Because that negative exponent just goes, in, it goes into a denominator. Okay, so this negative 6 over negative 1 squared, okay, this is a safe place to stop, but, like, you know, these are still true statements. That's equal to negative 6, and I think that's all I've got to say about b or c. What is a prime of 1? Well, this is, yeah, this is in a form where I'm ready to take the derivative. Okay, a prime is going to equal 4 sevenths of 7 is what? x to the, i got to subtract 1 from the power. So 4 over 7 minus 7 over 7 is going to be negative 3 over 7. And then the derivative of log x is going to be negative 1 over x. So I go ahead and plug in 1. I'm going to have 4 times 1 to the negative 3 sevenths. And this is kind of what I was uh, looking for with that one over here. Minus 1 over 1. Now, I know this is going to be 4 minus 1 is 3. But a fact that is true, um, I just want to you know, throw in over here, is that any real number power of 1 is going to be 1. Okay, You can take 1 to any, any exponent, it's still going to be 1. Okay. And that's something that comes up from time to time in AP calculus. Of course, you know, sitting here right now, I can't think about what that situation would be, but I, I know it happens. Okay, here's another division. We're going to want to uh, distribute that x to the 3 in the denominator, but we'll write it as if it was an x to the negative 3 in the numerator, because that's the same thing. And then while I'm at it, I might as well write that as x to the 1 half, start distributing. Plus, okay, negative 3 plus a half is going to be negative 2 and a half, so negative 5. Need to take b prime of x and then take that with power rule negative 3x to the subtract 1. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. And then derivative of x to the negative 5 halves would be negative 5 halves x to the negative 5 halves subtract 1 more. Um, negative 5 halves minus 2 halves is going to be negative 7 halves. And then they ask for b prime of 4, and so this is good. This is going to start fraction exponent practice in. Never a bad time for that. So negative 3 times 4 to the negative 4. I don't think I realized that, that was going to happen. Oh, 4 to the 4. Um, I think this is one that I messed up on, like, last week. I think it was 256, but I don't know. I'm going to make sure of that before I you know, do anything dumb here. Minus 5 halves of 4 to the negative 7 halves. Okay. Now, I just want to emphasize this is a safe place for us to stop in AP Calculus. But if we just felt like we had to uh, keep simplifying, we're certainly allowed to. It just has to be right. And minus 5 halves... Of, okay, I'm going to take the square root of 4, and that's going to be 2 to the negative 7th power. Okay, now, I'm going to be using a calculator for a second. Okay, sure enough, 4 to the 4 is 256. 2 to the 7, that means that would be 128. Oh, but wait a second. Oh, this is nice. Because the 2 times 2 to the negative 7 will be the same as 2 to the 8, which is 4 to the 4. So I've got negative 3. 3 over 256 minus 5 over 256, and that's going to be the type of thing that could simplify. Negative 8 out of 256, that's going to have to be 32. I can't believe that's the thing I'm tripping on. Um, 8 out of 256. I'm going to do a little bit of division. 256 divided by 8. And then just 32. Okay, so this is going to be negative 1 over 32. There we go. 
All right. So, um, yeah, that was a, that was a journey. Okay, I'm gonna get a second copy of this. So it's not looking bad. Done the first page, right, move on to the second page, and write an equation for the tangent line. Great, that's exactly what we need to practice on. We're gonna need a point, slope, put those together, and make an equation. So, um, the first, we're gonna start with a point. Okay, x equals 2, f of 2 equals 2 to the 5, minus 4 times 4 is 16, plus 5, okay, 32 minus 16 would be 16, add 5 to that. For the slope, I'm going to have f prime of x equaling 5x to the 4 minus 8x to the 3 plus 0 because the derivative of 5 is 0. I need f prime of 2 to give me the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at x equals 2. So that would be 5 times 2 to the 4 minus 8 times 2 to the 3rd. Okay. 5 times 16 is going to be 80 minus 64 would be a 16. Oh, yeah, and you could even see that. You could have 5 16s minus, okay, if I divided this in half and put it over there, so 4 times 16 is going to be the same as 8 times 8. Um, then you can see 5 16s minus 4 16s is 1 16. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. All right, then the equation, I'll write that in red. Um, So y minus the y coordinate of the point I know is on the graph is going to equal the slope multiplied by x minus the x coordinate of the point I know is on the graph. Okay. Part b, f of x is 2 over the fourth root of x cubed. Well, I plug in 1, uh, I'm going to get 2 over 1. So f of 1 equals 2. And then the slope... I'm going to need to take the derivative. So f prime of x is equaling, well, I might rewrite f. So that's 2 times x to the negative. Okay, remember it's the fourth root, so the 4 is going to be the x, I mean, the denominator of the exponent, to the negative 3 fourths. So I'm going to take the derivative of that. Negative 3 fourths of 2 is going to be negative 6 over 4. And like, yes, we could definitely simplify that, but we can do that later once we go plug in. Um, x to the negative 3 fourths minus 1, negative 3 fourths minus 4 fourths is going to be negative 7 over 4. Okay, and then I need f prime of 1. Any power of 1 is 1, so that's going to be negative 3 halves. Okay, now I've got a point of slope. I can write down my equation. So y minus 2 is going to be the slope multiplied by x minus the x-coordinate point we know on the graph. All right. Okay, here's a product. Must simplify before taking the derivative, simplify before differentiating. Okay, so we're going to make sure to distribute the x over both of these and the negative 2 over both of these. So f of x is equal to x times x squared x times 3x, negative 2 times x squared, and negative 2 times 3x. Now, if you want this to be your expression for f of x, like, you know, feel free to, right? You could take the derivative like that and, and it works the same. Um, but we can combine these like terms. I'm going to say that's equal to x to the 3 plus x to the 2 minus 6 times x. Now, I will point out the factored version of this, I think, I mean, you could go either way. You should get the same thing. Um, but for me, when I go to do my point, I feel like that's fewer computations, you know, less opportunity for me to make an error. So f of negative 1 is going to be negative 1 minus 2 multiplied by negative 1 squared plus 3 negative 1. So negative 3 times negative 2 is feeling like positive 6. Okay, so I'm going to have my point. Slope. This is going to be 
tough to fit, but okay, the derivative of f equals 3x squared plus 2x and negative 6. So I'm going to plug in x equals negative 1. Okay, square negative 1, get positive 1. Okay, so 3 minus 2 is 1, and 1 minus 6 is negative 5. So now we're ready to write this equation. So y minus 6 is going to be the slope multiplied by x minus negative 1. And then we've got another tangent line. And really at this point, I don't think there is such thing as too many of these type practice problems. Um, it's just like a very common thing for us to need to do in AP Calculus. Okay, yeah, so d is f of x equals 1 minus 4 cosine x at x equals pi. So in order to get the point, I'm going to need to evaluate f of, what's it, f of pi. So 1 minus 4 multiplied by the cosine of pi. Now that's definitely the type of thing that we're going to need to know. So we're thinking about the unit circle. And we know where pi is on that circle. That's right there. And pi is all the way to the left. Cosine is the horizontal displacement. I've gone negative 1 units, right? X coordinate there is negative 1. So this equals 1 minus 4 multiplied by negative 1. So it's going to be 1 plus 4 is going to be 5. Then to get the slope, I'll take the derivative. The derivative of 1 is going to be 0. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And I said this earlier, there's one very similar to this um, I think in the first set of problems, and I mentioned it, but I didn't actually write it that way. Negative 4 multiplied by the derivative of cosine is negative 4 times negative sine. That's going to equal 4 sine x. And that might be, I don't know if you can see that. I've got like a toolbar going over that. Who knows? I'll find out. This is my first time recording with this with this particular piece of technology. But once I've got my point my slope, I'm ready to write out my equation. So it's going to be y minus the y-coordinate, y minus f of pi, y minus 5 is equal to the slope. I did not actually find the slope. All right, f prime of pi is going to equal 4 times the sine of pi. And sine is the vertical displacement from the x-axis. I am not displaced from the x-axis, so this is going to equal 0. And so, okay, the slope is 0, so it would be like 0 times everything. Okay, well, that's not very interesting, so 0 times anything is 0. y minus 5 equals 0. Okay, that's a different equation for that is y equals 5. And that does mean that we have a horizontal tangent line. But that shouldn't be surprising if we see that the derivative is 0 and the slope of the tangent line, which is, you know, f prime, is equal. Now, with these, we are going to evaluate the limit, not necessarily by like, you know, using algebra or anything, but by translating it into a derivative problem. So I think what I need to remind you of is, you know, kind of the definition of f prime of c is going to equal the limit as x approaches c, I guess, I usually do it the other way first, f of x minus f of c, rise of the line, as run goes towards 0, x minus c. Okay, but it's also the limit as h approaches 0 of f of c plus h minus f of c, all divided by h, and that's definitely what's not on your screen. Okay, so when we see, it's like, okay, I see h approaching 0, h approaching 0, h approaching 0. These are all going off of that form, whereas these are getting at that one. Okay. So I'm going to say, uh, maybe I uh, will say uh, this. Uh, I see the limit of h approaches 0 over something that looks like a riser run. This is a derivative. Okay, so what we're trying to do is take the derivative of okay, what's the function and the value. You could see that right here, cosine of 2 pi over 3. Well, that is going to be the derivative of cosine x at the point where x equals 2 pi over 3. 
Now the derivative of cosine equals negative sine. And we could plug in 2 pi over 3. Right. 2 pi over 3 was over here. This sine is the vertical distance here, so it's going to be positive. And this is a tall 30, 60, 90 triangle, so it's just the way I did it in my pre-cal class last year. That's feeling like root 3 over 2, but it's the negative of that, so I've got negative and square root of 3 divided by 2. Okay. Now this one, as x approaches 5, this is a huge mistake. Okay, uh, this should hopefully be fixed by the time, you know, maybe next year. I realize I, I handed out paper copies. Okay, that was going to be hard to do, right? There was no x in that limit, so I guess it would just be that original fraction, but that's not very interesting. All right, so this is the limit. I'm changing it to as h approaches 0 of the square root of 5 plus h minus the square root of 5 multiplied by h. So this is what we do. Um, it looks like the point that we're interested in is c equals 5, x equals 5. So and what we're doing to it right there is taking the square root. It's like, well, are we doing the square root to the 5 plus h there? And it's like, yes. Okay, so the function we're taking the derivative of is square root x. And the x value we want to plug in is 5. Now, x, the square root of x is x to the 1 half. So if I make the derivative power rule, um, I'm going to have 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And then we're plugging in x equals 5. And that's going to be 1 over 2 from the 1 half. And then 5 to the negative 1 half, that's just the square root of 5 going into the denominator. And so there we go. Don't really have anything else to say about that one. Okay, here we've got the limit as h approaches zero of natural log of e to the x or e plus h minus natural log of e divided by h. And it's like, yes, we do know that natural log of e is one, but that's not really what you're getting asked here. It's like, what about this limit? This is a derivative. We see that h approaching zero rise over one. This is the derivative of a the function that we're working with does appear to be natural log, right? It looks like it has to do with log. Okay, the value that we're plugging in is we see here e and then e plus h. Okay, this makes sense. So I think this is going to be the derivative of natural log x at the point where x equals e. So I'm going to take the derivative of natural log and then I'm going to plug in e. Okay, the derivative of natural log x is 1 over x. And then I'm plugging in x equals e and so this is just going to be 1 over e. And now, finally, I've got one that, yeah, that's using that. f of x is 3 over x squared. Okay. Um, divide by x minus 1. Okay. These are, I actually think these are a little more straightforward using this version of the definition of the derivative. But we've got to be ready for either in this class. You prefer 1. Honestly, if you prefer 1, like, you know how life works. That, that's not going to be the one you see, you know, come up when you least expect it, you know, when it actually matters. So it's going to be 3 over x squared. And, but what I don't understand is like how that's 2. Think about this. x is approaching 1. f of x minus f of c. Yeah, how am I supposed to get, I think that's supposed to be minus 3. Okay, it's a new homework and that's why I was, why I'm recording solutions to catch the errors. Okay, so that's 3 over x squared minus 3 divided by x minus 1. So this would be the derivative of 3 over x squared at x equals 1. Yeah, that's going to make more sense. All right, and so we can take the derivative using the power rule. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. x to the negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And then we're going to plug in x equals 1, so negative 6 times some power of 1 is but I will point out that this expression right here, up above the negative 6, uh, with the 1 to the negative third power, you are perfectly safe to stop there. All right, now, uh, 5 sine of x plus h minus 5 sine of x divided by h. It's like, wait a second, I thought we were looking for some number to go in here. And usually you are, but if there's not, well, we're looking for a formula that would give me the 
derivative of five sine x at any x. So that's just like, rather than plugging in a value, we're just taking the derivative of five sine x, and that's five cosine x. And then the same thing here. It's like, wait a second, I thought I was supposed to be saying like uh, f of x minus f of c over x minus c, but I thought c was a real number. Okay, in this case, no, we're just going to take f prime of c. Okay, because if you go back, that's what the definition is. So we're going to say it's the, the derivative of x squared plus x plus 1. You could say it x equals c if you wanted, but that's... The idea is we're just taking the derivative. 2x plus 1 plus 0. Okay, there we go. That was enough of those problems. 6 was good. Okay, but that's a uh, that's a problem type that is not uncommon in the multiple choice section of AP calculus, especially for AB. So, um, the graph, the next one here I've got, is the graph of y equals f prime of x is shown in the figure below. It is known that f of 5 equals negative 4. Write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 5. So we're going to need a point. x equals 5, y equals negative 4. And they told me that point was on the graph of f, and we're, that's our point of tangency, so we'll be interested in that. Okay, for the slope, I'm going to need f prime of 5. Fortunately, this is the graph of f prime of 5, and it shouldn't be too hard to find. Okay, yeah, that's right there. That's equal to 2. So with these ingredients, I can say I'm finding an equation. y minus negative 4 equals the slope times x minus 5. Okay, here's a okay, We've done this problem before in other iterations, but this one is kind of like a new problem type. Okay, what do they ask us? to make this function differentiable at x equals 4. We can do that. Um, we're just going to have to uh, think about two things. Now, in order for a function to be differentiable, it must be continuous, and its derivative must exist. Okay, so we're first going to check to make sure uh, that we're forcing g to be continuous. Or you could say to be smooth or differentiable, that the graph, the two pieces of graph, need to be in the same y-coordinate at x equals 4, and they need to have the same slope. Okay. Either way, it's the same idea. G is continuous. This is where we're going to set x plus 2b equal to a times x squared at the point where x equals 4. So that would be 4 plus 2b equals a times 4 squared. That will be 16a. And that's an equation, but it's got A and B in it, so there's not really much I can be doing with that right now. Um, I think at this point, what I can do is take the derivative of each of these pieces. So we're going to say, all right, G is differentiable if when we take the derivative of these pieces, set them equal to each other and plug in 4, we have a true statement. All right, so x plus 2b, the derivative of x plus 2b, b is going to be a constant, taking with respect to x, so the derivative of x is 1 plus 0, and that's going to need to equal the derivative of ax squared. Well, a is just some number. If it was 5x squared, we'd multiply down. 2 times 5 is 10. So this would just be 2a times x to the first. Okay, and then we're going to plug in x equals 4. I'm going to get 1 equals 2 times a times 4. That's going to be 8a. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is, this is something I can solve. I'm going to divide both sides by 8. I'm going to get a is 1 8. Okay, then I'm going to go back over here to the work I was doing in red and say 4 plus 2b is going to equal 16a. We just learned that a is 1 over 8. It's like, oh, that's really nice. 16 divided by 8, that's a whole number. So I must be going down the right road. So I've got 4 plus 2b equaling 16 over 8 is 2. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. 
and then I will get b equals negative one. Okay, so that, that is all values. There's really only one set of values. Um, but if I have a equals one eighth and b equals negative one, then the function will be differentiable at x equals four. All right, now number seven and eight are going to require the use of a calculator, and I am not sure where my nearest calculator is. I've got one on a charger that's like a student's calculator. I'm going to have to use your calculator. Yeah, that's not good. It was still dead. Been unplugged. Okay, I'm starting to think that was more trouble than it was worth, but I've got a calculator, got the glare gone and everything, so. Line L is tangent to the graph of y equals e to the x at the point A and e to the A. Okay, so that's point on the graph of y equals e to the x. That makes sense. What is the positive value of A for which the y-intercept of line L is one-third? This is a hard question. This is the extension here. Okay, if you're interested and, and you thought that the rest of the questions were way too easy, this is for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that away for a second. And we're going to write um, kind of a, an equation for the line tangent to the graph of this function at this point. I've got a point. I'm going to need a slope. So I'm going to take the derivative dy dx equals e to the x. So if I've got a point, my slope will be e to the a also, right? because e to the x is its own derivative, so it makes sense that the height is the slope. It's kind of what makes e e. But, okay, so we're going to write the equation y minus the y-coordinate of the point I know is equal to the slope multiplied by x minus the x-coordinate. Okay, what is the positive value of a for which the y-intercept of line L is 1 over 3? And if you're not seeing what I'm saying here, you should draw yourself a picture of a line having you know, y-intercept one-third. I know that a point on this line has to be, a y-intercept is a place where x equals zero. So x equals zero, y equals one-third. So I'm gonna plug in one-third for y and zero for x. Plugging in zero for x. And now this is an equation that we're going to need to solve, but we can't like solve it by hand. So that's what makes it a calculator question. And, you know, usually in my calculus course, I wait until later on into the year to start solving equations with technology. Then I figure why not just do it now. Okay, so we're going to go in here and okay, there's obviously still some work in here from last year. Who knows what that was. Um, what I'm going to do is in Y1, I'm going to type this part of the equation. Okay, and I'm not too cool to use the fraction bar. Um, one third minus e to the a. Well, you know, I'm going to use a because we want to graph this thing. We're just going to use e to the x. And then on the other side, I've got e to the a multiplied by, you can do zero minus a if you want. I mean, don't think about it too hard. What's the positive value of a? Okay, well, that means I'm only looking where a or x is greater than zero. And if these two things are equal, then their difference is going to be equal. I that did not graph it like that. I forgot. I graphed them separately, right? Y1 and Y2. So I'm just interested in where they're intersecting with each other. And the value of X where I have that intersection, well, that's going to be telling me what I need to see. Um, now, as long as we're at, at this point, we're choosing the first curve is blue and the second curve is red. It doesn't actually matter if you can see those cursors on the screen. I just pulled them in so you can see what was going sake of the video, uh, give it a guess. Again, you don't have to be all that close. There's only one intersection. Um, but again, for the sake of the video, okay, we've got the intersection at x equals 0 
or 0.859. Much like in AP pre-calculus, we round to three decimals in this class. Three decimals always, no matter what, no questions. Okay, unless like the instructions clearly say to round to the nearest, you know, nearest the whole something, uh, 0 0.859. And on the topic of showing your work, when you use an, a calculator to solve an equation, obviously you're going to report the solution to the equation, but you also need to always be reporting the equation that you solved using technology. And while I'm here, I'm just going to mention, I recognize that there is an equation solver on the calculator, but I'm a little hit or miss with that. I don't always get it to work quite right. And I know that I'm good at solving an equation by graphing on the TI-84. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now, this next one here, f of x is log of x squared plus 1, and g of x is x to the 5 minus x to the 3. Tangent to the graph of f at x equals 3. Oh, nice. Okay, so this one we're just going to just gonna have to put in the work. So, wait a second. You don't know how to take the derivative of this one. This one doesn't fit. Um, yeah, pardon me. This was yeah, too advanced. Um, we are going to come back to this one. Uh, when we know the chain rule, like this log of x squared plus one, that's the outside and inside. Like I just, I've told you that the derivative of log of x is one over x, but uh, it's not going to be just as easy as saying that this is one over x squared plus one. Once we know the chain rule, this will be a very interesting question for us, and I will, you know, maybe do this one as a warm up or something. Just time with maybe when I see some people having a calculator. Um, Yeah, because I don't want to get into having you take the derivative numeric. Is that what I wanted? Okay. What I'm going to say is, you know, I'm going to just do this because I'll show you the calculator can take the derivative. Um, okay, so natural log of, because it's like you could do this if you knew what buttons to press. Okay, natural log of x squared plus 1. The line tangent to the graph of x equals of f at x equals 3, so I'm going to just, you know, maybe graph from 0 to 5 or something. Okay, great. We're interested in the slope of the line tangent at x equals 3, so we're going to calculate, that's where all the good stuff is on this calculator, and we're going to hit dy dx. We want to know what's the slope at that point. And now we're going to type in x equals 3. We don't want to scroll over with trace, it won't be exactly 3. We're typing in 3, and we're going to get dy dx equals 0. Six. Okay, so, okay, I've changed my mind. I'm going to solve this one. I'm going to say f prime of 3 equals 0 0.6. Okay, but again, you know, you, you see the disclaimer. You don't actually need the calculator skills for quite a while in here. Um, this is just if you're interested. Okay, is parallel to the line tangent to the graph of g at x equals a. Okay, well, g prime of x, that's right on our level. This is what I was intending. I did not tell anybody how to find a derivative numerically. Okay, minus 3x to the 2. Okay, and we're interested in where g prime of x equals 0 0.6. And that will give me the value of a. Okay, right, yeah. Parallel, parallel lines have the same slope. Oh, there's that algebra 1 again. And, okay, so at x equals 3 is parallel. Okay, so the slope of the line tangent to g at x equals a is 0 0.6. That means that g prime of a equals 0 0.6. Six. And so that's going to give me an equation I can solve using technology. So 5x to the 4 minus 3x to the 2 equals 0 0.6. And maybe I'll show you a different way to solve using the calculator. It's still going to be graphing. I'm not going to be using the equation solver. I'm not that good with the calculator, right? We can just, you know, if these two things are equal, then their difference should be equal to 0. And so I'm going to just graph one thing and hope for the best. Okay, a is greater than zero, so hoping I've got the window set kind of right. So 5x, that's an x, 5x to the 4 minus 3x to the 2 minus 0 0.6. I'm interested in where this is equal to zero. Okay, I'm just going to stay with the same way. Oh, there it is. 
okay, I'm not going to question it. I've found a place where it equals zero. They said the value of A, so it's, I'm assuming there's only one. Okay, now if we're trying to find a zero, I just blew right through that. Okay, okay we calculate. We go down to the zero, like the x-intercept. That's going to be where the output is zero. Okay, and it's going to ask for left bound or right bound and a guess. Okay, by left bound, we just need to be to the left of that x-intercept. Now, you can scroll like I did, or you can type in like x equals 0.5, some number you know is to the left of it. Um, I know that this intercept is happening over here before x equals 1, so I could use 1 as a right bound. Uh, but if you weren't sure about that, you could say 1.1. Uh, and then giving it a guess, well, it doesn't matter, there's only one zero in there. And there we get x equals 0 0.870 or 0 0.871. And that's going to be, oh, whoops. These are supposed to be A's, I feel like. But it doesn't really matter. We misspelled A. So this is going to be A equals 0 0.871. Okay. And there we go. Now, I know that there's a, there's a couple more questions on the back side of this, which I think is about to, oh no, I'm not really about to put that one there. Um, trig and exponential or log. Oh, just some derivatives. Oh, well, gladly. So, let's bring a piece of scrap paper. So, for number nine, well, first we're going to take f prime of x and we're going to plug in 5 pi over 6. F prime of x is going to equal 8 times the derivative of cosine is going to be negative 8 sine x. Then f prime of 5 pi over 6 is going to be equal to negative 8 times the sine of 5 pi over 6. And sine of 5 pi over 6, that's going to be a half. So negative 8 times a half is negative 4. And if you need trig support, um, just go look at any of my pre-calculus videos uh, from, you know, on trigonometry. We did so much of that unit circle, um, but I'm trying to get out of here at a reasonable time and not have this video be, you know, I'm already at 47 minutes. This is longer than I usually like it to be. Um, G prime of negative pi over 3, G prime of x equals 0 minus 2 times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. Okay, so G prime of negative pi over 3 is going to equal negative 2 cosine of negative pi over 3. Okay, that one's a little different. Let me remind you that negative pi over 3 would be down there. And we would say, all right, well, the cosine, that's going to be positive half. So positive half multiplied by negative 2, that's going to be negative 1. All right, 11. H of x, we're asking for h prime of 1. H prime of x is going to be 2e to the x minus 3. 3 times 1 over x. h prime of 1 is going to equal 2e to the 1 minus 3 times 1 over 1. Well, that's just 2 times e subtract 3. Okay, now I've got two more. It's asking for some equations of tangent lines, and so I'm going to do this one real fast. For number 12, I need a point, and that's going to be x equals 1, y equals 1 squared plus e to the 0. That's 1 plus 1 be two. For the slope, it's going to be, you know, 2x plus uh, e to the x minus 1 is its own derivative, um, which you could convince yourself of using exponent properties, but I just don't have time for that right now. I'm trying to get out in front of the traffic. So I'm going to plug in x equals 1, and I'm going to have 2 plus 1, and that's going to equal 3. And then the equation is going to be y minus 2 is 3 times x minus 1. What I'm talking about over here, e to the x minus 1 equals e to the x divided by e to the 1. And that's going to be 1 over e times e to the x. And, well, the derivative of 2 e to the x is 2 e to the x. And 1 over e is just some number. So the derivative of 1 over e e to the x is going to be 1 over e e to the x. So I just felt like that would be really not the right thing to do to just leave you hanging on that one. Okay, so for number 13, my point is going to be x equals pi over 3. y equals 1 minus the cosine of pi over 3. Okay, cosine of pi over 3, that feels like a half. 1 minus a half is a half. For the slope, I'm going to have derivative of b is going to be b prime 0 minus negative sine. That's 
sine of pi over 3. That looks like root 3 over 2. And then my equation is going to be 1 minus a half equals root 3 divided by 2 times x minus pi over 3. And that's a, that's a classic introductory calculus question right there. All right, so that's going to be all for this video. That was plenty long. Thanks for watching.